Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to Finance Asset. This is Battlefield 1. In today's CTE update video, we're going to be talking all about the game changes currently being tried in the CTE, not related to the They Shall Not Pass DLCs. So if you so will, this is part two of the CTE update video. We're going to be talking about some major changes to the way grenades work, to the way grenades are resupplied, how long it takes to resupply, as well as some damage changes and some minimum time before exploding changes. We'll also be talking about some kind of smaller things happening around tanks and suppression. There's also a major segment here to talk about AA cannons, how they interact with enemy planes, and last but not least, of course, the usual changes to weapon balance that are worth mentioning. With that being said, then let's get straight into the first of the topics, resupply and grenade changes. Now, first and foremost, grenades are no longer directly resupplied by necessarily ammunition crates or by ammunition pouches. Now, grenades, much like usual gadgets, have essentially a cooldown. So after so many seconds, you will get a new grenade automatically, independent of whether or not you've actually frequented a support player for some ammunition. Now, depending on the actual grenade, this is going to take a different amount of time and is still subject to change as it is being trialed in the CTE. The frag grenade, light anti-tank grenade, impact grenade and incendiary grenade will usually require 36 seconds for you to get one back. Gas is 27 seconds, the mini grenades will take 24, with the smoke taking 18 seconds and the crossbow grenades or crossbow ammunition having been moved from 15 seconds initially, now up to 25. Another change that you should note here is that the count of smoke, gas and mini grenades has been decreased from two to one, which means a lot less gas spamming. Hallelujah. Another thing to note here is that this timer is affected actually by the fact of whether or not you're close to an ammunition crate. If you're close or in the area of impact of an ammunition crate, the time will essentially pass three times faster. If you were to throw a frag grenade while sitting on an ammunition crate, instead of taking 36 seconds, it would only take 12 for you to get your grenade back. However, as of now, the ammo pouches don't affect this time. And as such, ammo pouches, at least in my opinion, currently become much less useful to turn to their bigger brother. So we'll have to see how that turns out. Another change affecting a number of grenades is the minimum time before exploding being increased. In the impact, this goes from 0.7 seconds to one second. In the case of the incendiary, this has been changed from 0.67 seconds to 1.3, as well as the mini grenade damage being increased from 65 to 72, making up somewhat for the fact that you now only carry one. And the inner blast radius of light anti-tank grenades has been slightly reduced. Now, moving on then to some more general changes and there's just a few of these here. Tripwire incendiary has have been decreased from two to one. The suppression from friendly gas has been reduced and there's a reduction in the A7V's flamethrower's range, essentially the heavy tank flamethrower version's range. Apparently this was able, or currently actually in the normal build, is able to shoot all the way out to 44 meters with its flames, which is kind of bizarre and Try it out. Maybe this thing is actually OP. That is at least going to be reduced to 24 meters to better match the VFX of the flame. Moving on then to the changes to the AA cannon. There's been some major changes here. First and foremost, the reduction of the blast and impact impulse. When you fly and you get hit by an AA, suddenly your plane shakes violently. Sometimes it's actually uncontrollable. And if you're close to the ground, it has happened many times to me before as well. You just simply have no choice but to crash. There's nothing you can do. You can no longer change course. This has been essentially stopped. Your plane should now remain controllable even under fire from the AA. There's still going to be screen shake, so that orientation is still a little bit more difficult, but your plane shouldn't physically be pushed into a certain direction. There's also been an apparent reduction of 50% to the impact damage of the AA to fighters and attack planes and 40% to bombers. Now, I'm not quite sure what this means because it's not, at least in my opinion, the full amount of damage here that's being reduced. Because when I flew around on the new map with my plane and I got hit by AAs, I would, there was still a similar amount of damage coming in, maybe slightly less, but certainly not 40, 50%. So what I'm thinking is possibly that there's a difference here between explosive damage and impact damage with the impact damage being significantly less to explosive damage, which would make sense given, of course, that planes were made out of wood and cloth mostly, not so susceptible to bullets because those just simply then went right through the plane, whereas, of course, explosions tore the entire plane apart. We're not quite sure. There's not been too much explanation or details here on DICE and how this works. In my opinion, the AA is still strong. However, apparently there has been a 50% reduction in the impact damage. Damage. Only time will tell what this truly means. Moving on then to the biggest category of changes in our today's video, and that is of course weaponry changes. Now first and foremost, there's been a recall reduction to the MG0815, of course the elite class weapon. There's been a minor reload increase to the M1911, nothing too substantial there for those of you who like to use this weapon, me myself included. 
The M1903 Experimental has gotten a major overhaul, however. It's gone from a 5-shot kill weapon firing at 450 rounds per minute to a 4-shot weapon firing at 350 rounds per minute. Now, this sounds like a good buff initially because this weapon was absolutely useless to begin with. However, if you compare this to something like the Autoloading 8.25 Extended, this weapon shoots at 359 rounds per minute and is able to 3-shot kill people within 17 meters, whereas the M1903 Experimental fire slower, requires 4 bullets, and only 4 shot kills somebody within 16 meters. So actually, if you were firing at somebody with the outloading 8.25 extended at 17 meters, not only would they have a higher fire rate, but they would require 3 bullets versus you requiring 5 bullets to down your target. So while I think DICE is going in the right direction here and nerfing the fire rate, increasing the damage, I think essentially with a fire rate of 350 rounds per minute and this damage model already decreasing so substantially at 60 meters that there's an additional bullet required, this should be a 3-shot kill and not a 4-shot kill. This weapon is, as of now, still useless. There's been some smoothing of recoil for the self-loading rifles and slight adjustments there, minor spread buffs for the self-loading rifles as well. Nothing too major here. Sadly, there's been an increase to the moving hip fire of LMGs by 0.25, I am not quite sure why this had to happen, but it has happened. There's also been a slight recoil reduction to the Madsen MG. I'm not quite sure if this was necessary either. However, the recoil reduction is not substantial, so you shouldn't really notice too much of a difference when using this weapon. Moving on then to the Assault class, the class that DICE seemingly likes to nerf the guns the most. And it's no different today, with the exception of it being the MP18, which has gotten a slight recoil reduction. The Automatico has also gotten a slight vertical recoil reduction. However, hefty horizontal increases to the recoil, making it even more difficult to use at medium range. There's also been an increase to the first shot recoil multiplier to the trench and storm variant of the Automatico, making the kick higher at the first shot, whereas there's been a decrease to the factory's first shot recoil multiplier of the Automatico. Better separating the factory and the trench, of course, with the trench now having the better hip fire over the factory, however, the factory having a less first shot recoil multiplier, whereas their overall or otherwise recoil patterns still remain the same. And of course, everybody's favorite gun to nerf, the Hell Regal. It's once more got an increase to horizontal recoil and an increase to moving hip fire of 0.25. I'm not quite sure why the Hell Regal needed a nerf, whereas I can somewhat see it with the Automatico. It's still, in my opinion, somewhat controversial. The Hell Regal is clearly underused, at least in my opinion, as is the MP18. Everybody in the Soul class either runs around with a shotgun or the Automatico. I hardly see people running around with the Hell Regal, so I'm not quite sure, especially why they had to nerf the hip fire, which makes this weapon even weaker against the Automatico and the MP18. Time will tell if these changes actually make it into the final game. With some of them, I approve of them. Some of them, especially regarding the Hell Regal, I'm not so happy about and I hope DICE reconsiders here. Let me know down below in the comments what you think about these changes, both to weapon balance, AA's cannons, and of course the big change to the grenade mechanics, which I highly approve for. The reduction of the number of gas grenades you can carry being my favorite feature here, as well as of course your future video suggestions. And with all that being said, of course, I'd like to Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 1 video.